Okay, welcome to this lecture on the ggplot2 cheat sheet. So we're back in our data science with our workflow. And um, what we'll do is we can see we get the, the documentation um, or the cheat sheet. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the cheat sheet. So just click this link here. It'll open this file down here. Once it's um, downloaded, just click the open button. And we have our data visualization cheat sheet. So this is the data visualization with ggplot2 cheat sheet, one of the most powerful cheat sheets, um, prop, if not the most powerful cheat sheets that um, we're going to cover in this course. So uh, there's a lot to go over here, and we're going to spend a lot of time going over a lot of the different content on this cheat sheet. So um, you can see how the first page is broken down. You've got the basics over here, which we'll cover in detail about how we start with data. Um, we add a geom. There's also a coordinate system and a plot. Um, we're going to see how the layered approach. So you start with your ggplot with the data. That'll create your canvas. Um, you're going to add mappings and so on. Um, and then you're going to add all sorts of sorts of different uh, geometries and and faceted functions and scales and and, th and things of that nature. Um, so that's some of the basics here on the left hand side. What we'll really be focusing on though is the and the power is um, being able to get to what what is over here are these geometries uh, very easily. So this cheat sheet is broken up beautifully. Uh, it has uh, a lot of the different um, geometries sectioned out. So we'll be dealing a lot with one variable and two variable. Um, so uh, you can see that if we just take, for example, the two variable, it's broken up into continuous x, continuous y, discrete x, continuous y, discrete x, discrete y. So continuous is like a numeric feature, typically. And that might be like the price of our, our bike data. And uh, discrete means like a categorical feature. So that might be like one of the categories of bikes. So uh, if we have a continuous X and a continuous Y, uh, you'll go into this section. So that might be looking at two variables. One is price versus quantity or something like that. Um, you would be able to, to find the appropriate function in here. So one might be like the geom point or geom jitter. Uh, so we you can get to those functions very quickly and easily using this cheat sheet um, just by looking at the different sections. Um, so just going down through, we won't spend a whole lot of time on graphical primitives just because I don't use them very often. I do, however, use geom h line and geom v line uh, quite often because uh, you're able to create just a horizontal or a vertical line based on those functions. Um, I also use geom segment, and we'll see that in a uh, advanced plot that we make towards the end of the the uh, this week. Um, uh, you'll see one variable, which I do use some of these uh, quite frequently. Um, I really like geom histogram and um, geom density, which are very similar. So uh, those are good, great for viewing distributions of a single variable. So that might be like if you want to look at the distribution of price. Um, you can get that very easily uh, using this geom density or geom histogram function. Uh, the next one is the two variable. Uh, so we already focused on this a little bit, um, but the ones that I use, I use geom label all the time, and we'll go over that. Uh, geom jitter I use uh, quite a bit. Geom point I use a ton. Um, geom smooth, which is to add like a trend line, I use that a ton. Geom text and geom label I also use quite frequently. Um, and the discrete X and continuous Y. Uh, we have geom call. I use this a ton for creating bar charts. Uh, geom box plot. Uh, I use this a ton. Geom violin to make violin. So these box plot and violin are very similar. Uh, I use these quite a bit. Uh, discrete X and discrete Y geom count, I actually don't use that very much. Um, continuous bivariate, I don't use uh, too many of these because these are more for um, visualizing distributions uh, using like three dimensions. So I don't use that 
too frequently. Um, I do use Geom Area a little bit, Geom Line a ton. Um, visualizing Error, I don't use these very much. And Maps, we won't, uh, won't go over in this section, um, just because that's more of a, a complicated uh, topic uh, that's out of the scope of this uh, tutorial. Uh, and then three variables. We'll do an advanced uh, heat map at the end of this uh, sec at the end of this week uh, with Geon Tile. So this is a great function here uh, for creating heat maps. 